So there's this guy named Saul. Maybe you've heard him before. He's this first century Jew, not not just any Jew, a, a Pharisee, what someone who has devoted his life to studying the Word of God. Didn't come from a wealthy family, didn't didn't come from prestige, but boy, did he work his way to the top, to, to, to the cream of the crop, the top of the class. And if you didn't think he was sincere, you had another thing coming. So, so Saul, this, this man who loved God, who loved the law that God had given to his people to guide them and shepherd them and bless them. One day he found out that there was a group of people who were followers of this guy named Jesus who had been killed. There was this group of people who were causing trouble in, in temples and in communities. They, they, they were saying things like Christ rose again, that, that he was the son of God. And of course, this was blasphemy. If you had just read scripture, you would know that. So Saul goes out to stop it. He rounded up groups of people to go out and harass, to exile, to, to beat and even kill these followers of Christ. Until one day, as he was riding to Damascus, a city in the north, there was a blinding light, and he was thrown off of his horse, and as he fell to the ground, all, all he could hear was a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you killing my people? Friends, welcome to another discussion on hearing the voice of God. We're coming close to the end now, and there's a couple more things that, that I'd like to talk about. Uh, today, one of the things that I, I really think it's important to discuss is what happens when we're wrong about what we hear from God. See, it's one thing to try and figure out what God's voice sounds like. It's another thing to figure out ways and environments that it's easier to hear the voice of God. And, and it's still another thing to hear a word that we don't necessarily want to hear those hard truths. But what happens if we're so sure that we have heard a word from God and we come to the conclusion that we were wrong? Or, or what if we hear a word and we're not quite there yet? If we still think we're right when clearly what we're doing is destructive and, and life-taking instead of life-giving. There's an old story in the Old Testament about King David, actually. And uh, maybe you remember this. This is with the whole Bathsheba incident. Uh, there, there's a prophet that comes to David. And this is after David had tried to cover up his, his sins. And the prophet comes up and says, King, there's a story. There, there's, there's, a, there's a problem in, in your kingdom that, that's going on. And there's... Um, Maybe you've heard the story, right? That there's one person who has many, 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 many sheep and another person who has one. And, and the shepherd with the large, numerous flock comes and takes the one sheep from the lonely shepherd. What should be done? What should be done? Uh, of course, that's a summary of the story. And you know what King David says? He gets up out of his throne and says, well, the man should be punished. Justice must be done. And at that moment, the prophet stands up and points to David and says, you are that man. Now, if you remember the rest of the story, David doesn't throw the prophet out. He doesn't order him to be executed. He, he doesn't look the prophet in the eye and continue lying. 
he tears his clothes in an act of sorrow and repentance and says, you're right, you're right. And now I must turn from my wicked ways. See, I think one of the things, especially as we sit in discernment, one of the things that we have to be careful of is that we continue to keep a spirit of humility. And what I mean by humility is is an ability to see things as they are, as they really are, not to overinflate or underinflate the situation. Um humility in many ways is knowing who we are, knowing where we stand, and being honest about it. And in many ways, I think humility is extremely important as we sit and listen for words from God, because as soon as we start thinking that we have all the answers, and this is one of the problems that I see, um, not, not only in the world today, but not only in the church today, but but also, when I'm honest with my own heart, it's easy to think that we have all the answers. It's easy to think that we have truly, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, heard from God. This is what happened with Saul, remember? That, that he was 100% positive that his calling was to root out these Jesus followers. And yet, eventually, he heard a word from Christ himself. And see what's interesting in, in each of these scenarios is that the people eventually repent. They, they eventually turn back to God in humility and in, uh, in, in many ways, sorrow. And say, Lord, I was wrong. God, show me, show me what, what it really is like. How you truly want me to live. Because, friends, it's one thing to gain all of the skills to start to hear what God is saying. But one of the skills that's important to not forget is the ability to repent to turn back, to admit we were wrong, and get back on the path of God. That takes a great amount of moral fortitude, uh, an ability to know that we are children of God, that we've already been forgiven, and, and whatever mistakes we make, we can overcome them. We we can learn from them and grow from them. Not to say that we sweep them under the rug, but, but it is to say that we are not defined by the people we have been. We, we are defined by what God has called us to. See, there's another story that we tell in the church. It's... It's the story actually after Jonah and the whale, or the big fish, however you translate that passage. See, the whole reason Jonah was in trouble in the first place is because he was being sent to Nineveh to preach a message of repentance and good news to the people, that, that if they would turn back to God, that they would be spared. And he got to the city, and, and he walked miles into it. And he started preaching. And he started calling the people to turn to God. And do you know what they did? They turned to God. And do you know what God did? He forgave them. And he spared them. The, the wrath that was to come and the consequences of their own actions... So, friends, I hope today, I hope as you slowly begin to hear the voice of God more clearly, that you also grow in maturity and, and know when it is that you are being corrected by the Spirit 
uh, corrected through love. Um, so the three questions I want us to really wrestle with today. The three questions are these. How do you react to being told you are wrong? How do you react to being told that you're wrong? The second question is, do you have people to keep you honest? Do you have people in your life that will help you know when you're getting off the rails, when, when there needs to be some sort of course correction? And the third question is this. Do you know that God loves you? Do you know that there is nothing you can do to stop that love? Do you know that even if you hear incorrectly, that all that we're required of to do is to turn back to God and try again? Do you know that? How do you react when you found out you were wrong? Do you have people that can help you see the places that need correction? And do you know that all God requires of us is to turn back to him? And that getting it wrong is not the end of all things. Friends, may you be blessed with this wrestling. May you know that you are loved by God. May you continue to work on the ways that we listen to God. Because at the end of the day, friends, that's much of what it's about. It's listening to God, listening to one another, finding ways to continue to love each other as Christ loves us, even in the midst of pandemic and crisis and chaos and tiredness. May you rest in the presence of God and hear his voice. Go with God and God will go with you. Amen.